Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, making a whole Eclipse backup, I'm going to show you how you can back up all of your Eclipse data in one simple step for easy transfer to a new computer or long-term storage. Backing up data in Eclipse is easy, and there are several methods to doing so. In this video, we're going to sh go over how you can back up everything that you have in Eclipse. As a for instance, when I go to my user settings under Alt U and press load settings, I have several users. When I do this backup, it's going to back up each of these users, each of the files associated with those users if they're using different folders, and all of the block files associated with those users, as well as any ASCII files, PDF files, or RTF files that I've created and saved into the jobs folders of these users. This backup method is simple and easy, and is the easiest way to move all of your data at once. It's great if you're getting a new computer and you'd like to make it match what you have now, or if you'd like to back up everything that you have to make room on your current computer. The first thing that we're going to do in order to start this backup process is to close all the way out of Eclipse. Once we're closed out of Eclipse, the next thing we're going to do is open Windows File Explorer. Windows File Explorer can be accessed in three ways. You can press on the Windows File Explorer icon in the bottom left-hand corner or next to your Start button wherever your Start bar may be oriented. You can click on Start and choose Documents to open up Windows File Explorer, or you can hold down your Windows key on your keyboard and then press E as in Explore. And so I just pressed Windows and E, and this is the File Explorer window that came up. If I press on the file icon, I get the same window. However, if I go to Start and then Documents, I'm taken directly to the Documents folder. Any of these options is fine. I'll go ahead and just click on the File Explorer icon to start. Now in this window, the next thing that we're going to want to do is navigate to Documents. Documents is where all of your Eclipse data is stored unless you have stored something in a non-standard location. If you save files to your desktop, your downloads folder, or somewhere else on your computer outside of the documents and inside of the Eclipse folder, then those files will not be included in this backup and you'll need to back those up separately. However, this backup procedure should retain any files that are made with Eclipse as long as it's made with the standard settings. After navigating to File Explorer, we next want to find the Documents folder because that is where all of the Eclipse data is stored. I have three options immediately in this window to access the Documents folder. The first is the Frequent Folders shortcut in the top. The next is the Quick Access shortcut for Documents on the left. And the final option is Documents under this PC on the left. Any of these options will work. They'll all take me to the same location. If I double click on Documents here, I get my documents list that includes my Eclipse folder. If I click on documents over here, you see nothing changes because it's the same location. And if I click on documents down here, again, nothing changes because it is the same location. In the documents folder, I see that I have an Eclipse folder. And if I double click on that, I see all of my user settings and I see my jobs folders that have all of my job files in them. So I know that this is the right place and I'm looking at the right files. So I can go back to the documents folder. I can either hit the back button or I can click on documents at the top or documents at the left. After confirming that this is the correct data to back up, there are two options for storing it on an external drive. The first one is to simply right click on the Eclipse folder and go to send to and then select your USB drive or external hard drive or whatever drive you're going to back the files up to. So if I select my USB drive, you'll see that it will start sending all of the data over directly. I can wait for this process to continue and at that point I can either move these files directly to a new computer or I can navigate to the USB drive and rename the folder so that it represents when this backup was made. Once the backup is completed, I can navigate to my USB drive through the shortcut list on the left or by clicking on this PC and then double clicking on my USB drive. And you see that my Eclipse folder is here and it has all of the same data available in this folder. Now that the files have been backed up and the save is finished, I have a few options of what I want to do with these files on the USB drive. 
If I'm just going to move these files to a new computer, there's not really anything else that's necessary. But if I'm going to be using this process as a system-wide backup on the regular, I may want to indicate when this file was made. So I'm going to right-click on this file and rename it. And I will call it uh, Eclipse 7-13-2020 to indicate that it was a backup of Eclipse made on July 13th, 2020. Also, what some people like to do is instead of renaming the Eclipse folder, they will create a new folder. And once the new folder is created, they'll then drag the Eclipse folder into that folder so that they know when it's from. However, the Eclipse folder is still in its original format, just called Eclipse, and you can drop it into a new computer if, ne if necessary. How you name the files once they're backed up on your storage drive is really up to you and may depend on how you're going to use these backups. Some people may choose to do a backup of this style once every few months and then remove the files from their computer to save space, or you may choose to ju just do this once a year or occasionally or only when you get a new computer. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how you can take this backup and put it back into Eclipse to make use of these files on a new computer, or if you com your computer crashed and you had to get a new hard drive or something like that. In this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to restore the data that we backed up as if you were going to use it on a new computer. So this is my new computer that doesn't have anything but Eclipse installed on it yet. When I open up Eclipse, in fact, I don't even have a user yet because I haven't used Eclipse on this computer at all. So I'm going to fill in my first and last name here before I import my data that I backed up from the other computer. It's important that you fill in the step first, so I'm going to give it my first and last name, and I'm going to choose a short name. This is the same short name that I have on my other computer. One of my other users is simply named Ashley, and that's fine. When I import the data from my other computer, that data is going to overwrite this new blank user and I'll have all the correct settings. I need to just put in this user to get Eclipse set up and ready to go. If I put in the data on this new computer before I set up the user, then I may run into an error later. So after setting up the user and verifying that I can get in and out of Eclipse, I'm going to go ahead and put the data for all the rest of my users in. And you'll see that when I go into Eclipse, I only have a single user that I created just now, and I don't have any files listed at all. And so if I open up File Explorer again, I have plugged in my USB drive, and it has my backup, and inside of that backup is the Eclipse folder. So I'm going to select the Eclipse folder and copy it. And then on the left hand side of this window, I'm going to click on documents. And again, it doesn't matter which documents I click on. And you'll see that I already have an Eclipse folder. But if I go into it, there's only a single user. And in that user folder, there are no jobs. And so what I want to do is instead of this Eclipse folder, I want to use the one that I just copied. So I'm going to right click in this window where the Eclipse folder already is. I don't want to right click on top of the Eclipse folder. I want to right click in a blank area in the same place as the existing Eclipse folder and choose paste. Windows will now paste all of the data that I brought in from the other computer into this computer. And you'll see that it has found that there are a few files with the same name. If I open it, it'll show me which of the files that I want to choose from. However, what I want to do is get the files that are in the backup because these are the files that actually have my user settings. They're not the dummy files that Eclipse created just to get going. So I want to select the files from backup 713 2020 and then hit continue. And so now if I go into the Eclipse folder under documents and then Eclipse, you'll see that I have all of those files again that I copied over and I have all of my user files with all of my job files. And so that was a fast and simple process to back up all of my files and also restore them on a new computer. This process is very helpful when you get a new computer if you want to make it match exactly. However, if you don't want to back up all of your files at once, you're going to want to use other backup tools such as the file manager or tools backup and restore. Anytime support 24-7 is available from Advantage Software, including weekends and holidays.
Tech support can always be reached at 772-288-3266. We're also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Please reach out to us if you have questions about this video or any of Eclipse's other great features or any of Advantage Software's other amazing products. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider sharing it with someone you think may also enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.